Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, we're gonna be covering the updates from Microsoft in August of 2024. If you follow along in the past, you know I focus in on what's relevant to the MSP space, blocking out the noise from the 100 or so announcements that come from Microsoft each month. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Nick, I'm a Microsoft MVP, and I've been creating content here in the channel for the better half of a decade. If you haven't already and you'd like to go ahead and see these videos every month, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, like this video. Otherwise, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay guys, so as we dive in here, just a quick reminder that I do supplement these videos with a blog post with more helpful information, links, video tutorials, things like that. So check it out in the description of this video. But getting into it here, we're gonna start off with Microsoft Teams as we usually do. This one, if you've experienced this pain, you know why this is a benefit here of being able to copy and paste a message that does not include the timestamp or message of the author name. I often have to X that out or just erase it. It's really annoying. So. Microsoft's heard these frustrations, and this is actually GA today. So if you were to copy a message, it would not include those other components. Next one here is for meetings and for anonymous participants. This is really to help against, as it's showing here, the malicious bot and third-party app joins to your meetings. You really want to have this locked down and secure. Generally speaking, you would have a policy that does not allow for anonymous meeting joins or automatic anonymous meeting joins, but this is also giving a capture verification as well too. Timelines for this one's early October and will be complete by mid-October. Real quick guys, a short break for our sponsor Cloud Capsule here, which is an application that I've built to help you monitor your security within your Microsoft 365 tenant that is mapped to the CIS controls. This is something that you could leverage to perform security audits across your customers or your individual Microsoft 365 tenants, map it to CIS, and begin to have steps in mind to go perform a compliance uplift within these customer environments, as well as derive certain project revenue from them as well too. So if you haven't already, definitely check it out. You go to cloudcapsule.io and run a free assessment today to see what it's all about. This next one here is expanded search options for one-on-one -on -one chats. So as you can see here in the screenshot, this is giving users the ability to search beyond just the one-on-one -on -one chat to everything that might be within Teams that's related to that user. Maybe it's between you know a Teams channel or you know another group chat with that user within it. This is just expanding that context for the search results that are returned. That'll happen mid-August, be complete by late August. So by the time you're watching this, you may be able to see that within Teams. Next one here is for more of your webinars or your live events where you're doing some Q&A. This is giving the ability for users to upvote comments, which I think is actually kind of cool, just given that there might be a lot of comments in some use cases. And you can see as that meeting organizer, which comments are really popular amongst the entire crowd to maybe prioritize, especially if you have a limited subset of time, which most of us do on live webinars. This will happen early September, be complete by late September. Shifting into Outlook here, this is for new Outlook, and this is giving users the capability to open attachments by double clicking on them in their preferred desktop application. Previously, when you were to double click, it would just open that in an integrated experience within the web, and you'd have to basically save it locally to be able to open it up there. So they're changing that up. So that's just a native experience, which is a nice um, piece and addition there. And this will happen in late August, be complete by late September. Key thing to note this with this screenshot here, also users will get this prompt for files that are different file types outside of your typical Word, PowerPoint, Excel documents that they will be prompted to consent to and they can uncheck that always ask before opening this type of file to avoid that like a PDF is a great example that they show here. Next one here is also giving you the admin ability if you're an admin within the tenant to migrate users from the classic Outlook to the new Outlook. Check out my blog for those steps. There's some configuration steps that you can take, but this is kind of what they would see when they go into log into the Outlook. They can either switch now or it's saying that will automatically switch you the next time you sign into Outlook. So if you're looking to move them, not a lot of us maybe have a priority behind that, honestly, with the feedback that I've seen from Outlook, the new Outlook, but this is that capability if you wanted to push them over. This will happen late August, be complete by late September. These next two are related to hybrid work. And so this one is giving you the ability within your calendar view 
to also see who's within the office building based off of work hours and location, which is actually a pretty cool feature. You can see that in the screenshot here in the upper right corner. Uh, this will happen early October and be complete by late October. Similar functionality here, but this My Day pane in the new Outlook here as well will also show updated work hours and location. If you've added your location, it will ask you to add it. And then you'll be able to see the users who are in the building on that particular day. This is a pretty cool feature, I would say, if you are in hybrid work. Obviously, that's the specific aspect of this uh, for people coming into the office. This will also happen early October, be complete by early October, so roughly the same time frame there. This next one here I don't think will be used terribly a lot, but it is a nice to have in the sense of being able to copy all the attendees and their responses into a clipboard. Their responses meaning they accepted the meeting, they declined, and so forth might be used in communications prior to the meeting or after the meeting. This will happen mid-October, be complete by mid-November. This next feature here, whether or not this is going to lead to better support, is still yet to be seen. We've all been through support with Microsoft, but this is a get diagnostics feature for users to submit logs to Microsoft support during an interaction. It's just kind of more ease of use to help Microsoft try to troubleshoot the issue. It is a pretty cool feature, you know, just in general. I just want to see that it actually helps solve cases a little bit faster than we see today. But this will happen late August, be complete by late September. Shifting into Microsoft OneDrive here, this is just extending that colors feature that you may have been experiencing within uh, OneDrive on the web into your file explorer as well too, so that you can manage the folder colors. And this is really helpful from maybe just an organizational sense. This will happen mid-September and be complete by early October. Shifting into Intune here, this is the only one I wanted to cover with Intune today. If you're familiar with Auto Patch, this is a unification between Auto Patch and Windows Update for Business. Many of us in the small business space aren't using Windows Auto Patch because it's an enterprise feature. But if you were, there was a lot of confusing here by the overlapping considerations or tenant switching that you had to do between Auto Patch and Windows Update for Business policies. So that you to find that, have more details about all this in my blog, you can check out. This will happen mid-September and gradually roll out to all tenants by mid-October. Shifting into Entra here as well, this is a really cool feature. The only thing I don't like is that it's catered by a premium license and specifically Entra P2. But this is an attacker in the middle detection alert that they have within the analysis that they're doing on the sign-in logs. And this is specifically a compromise by diversity in the middle who's intercepted the user credentials. And this will play into if you've had conditional access policies set up for users flagged with high risk to go ahead and block their sign-in or make them reset their password or something like that. This will happen mid-August, be complete by late August. Shifting into Copilot here, a lot of great announcements. This first one I'm really excited about. It is available today within my tenant. Likely, based off the time you see this video, will be in yours if you're using Copilot for Microsoft 365. But this is giving you the ability to schedule a meeting based off of an email or email chain. And in my testing, it's been pretty good, you know, about not only creating the meeting invitation, adding all the participants from the email conversation, but it also drafts some of the common time consuming tasks that we have, like the meeting title, the agenda, and also it adds the email thread as an attachment, as a reference point too. So pretty cool functionality here, getting more into you know the proactive nature of using Copilot. We saw that last week with the scheduled prompts as well too. This will happen again mid-August, late August, so you should see this now within your Outlook environment. Next one here is integrating with Microsoft Word, giving you an automatic summary of the Word document. As soon as you enter, you can close this out. You don't have to interact with it necessarily, but it's giving you, again, more of that proactive touch point. I talked on this a couple different times, but I think that's where we're going to see more adoption in the Copilot is that I don't have to go chasing after Copilot to really get value. It, it should be kind of interfacing with me on a day-to-day on a -day basis and being proactive about what it sends me as far as summaries, um, you know, email messages, things like that. This will happen late August and be complete by late September. This one here is kind of confusing because you had to be thinking to yourself, well, number one, what is the enterprise data protection? Number two, didn't I already have this with Copilot? This is specifically for the co-pilot experience that you have within the web when you're just chatting. And typically you would have kind of the work or web view toggle if you're familiar with this and that experience. 
but this is specifically tying into an Entra account, redirecting the user uh, for that as well too, so that they can have enterprise data protection versus commercial data protection. And really at the end of the day, you know, what that gets us in addition to, you know, the high level security and data privacy features is that we have a lot of logging that we can get into the purview section of our Microsoft tenant that includes things like our audit logs or being able to do e-discovery, things like that against the user's messages that they're sending into Microsoft Copilot on the web. So a lot to unpack there. Just want to give you a quick synopsis because I know that could be confusing, but this will happen mid-September, be complete by mid-October. And then they're also extending here in this next announcement uh, some capabilities for graph APIs to tap into Copilot data. And they specifically reference one for usage, and it just kind of shows more of an output about the analytics there that you might want to use in other third-party reporting or your own you know, Power BI reports, whatever that might look like. This will happen early September, be complete by mid-September. Shifting into the last section here, this is the admin section. First one's related to bulk sender insights and being able to run simulations. That's included in your Defender for Office 365 licensing, but really starting to look at fine-tuning bulk email policies that you have with the anti-spam policy within Defender and Exchange Online. Uh, the lot to unpack there, you can see more about that in my blog post and get some links there. This will happen mid-August, be complete by mid-September. And then the very last one here, public preview of the FIDO2 provisioning APIs. So I thought this one was cool just because it allows to pre-provision you know, FIDO keys, security keys for a user without needing to have necessarily the user perform that as a self-service activity whenever they get you know, a YubiKey as a use case. So Microsoft has some preferred providers for the FIDO2 keys that you can see with the link blog posts I have on my blog so you can check that out but it's in public preview today so not everybody will see it and get more information about that again on the blog okay guys that's everything i had for you today definitely comment below with some of the features or functionality you're most excited about that's coming out as always any questions as well too like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already definitely check out cloud capsule as well if you haven't to run a free assessment for security in your microsoft 365 tenant i'll see you guys next week